Without saying another word, Hiro closed his eyes and assumed a look of deep concentration. He then lifted, he then lifted his, his hands, palms up before his face, and uh, nothing happened. With great sadness, and it seemed to me a certain amount of relief, Hiro declared, the summoning a failure, failure is no good, Miki. She won't come to me now. She probably never will again. Try it one more time. Please, Miki, just once. Look, this is hard enough for me as it is without you, pre pre pressuring me. There was a sudden world of, re world of leaves high above us. We turned around. We turned our heads skyward. And if this is an ordinary spider, I'm going to fall over. Well, one thing's for sure: if it if it was an ordinary ordinary spider, it was doing it was doing awfully good hold spirit impersonation. I stepped away and I left the two of them alone. If there was to be any kind of recon re reconciliation, reconciliation between Hiro and Enra, it was nothing I could have a direct hand in. Finding shelter under the branches of a, of a nearby pine tree, I crouched down and waited. When at last, the two of them came to me. Hiro wore a, wore a look of both relief and a confusion. She's going to help us, Miki, but only if we agree to certain conditions. She says that we must follow her instructions at all times, even even when they appear appear strange, or wrong wrong headed, or dangerous. She says. She says that if ever if ever a time comes when either of us refuse to, refuse to do as she says that she will abandon us then and there just as I just as I abandoned her and that no and that and that no amount of summoning will ever bring her back Hold spirits ask them to lend you a hand with something and they end up making you sign a blood oath. Still, Enra, Enra seemed to be on our side. And hey, Hiro and I weren't exactly novices when it came to doing things that were dangerous and wrong-headed. So we promised absolute faith in Enra's, Enra's guidance in return for her getting us to the cave, safe and sound. What kind of animals is she going to become then? Well, I mentioned your idea about her changing into a bird or a bug or something. Apparently, apparently, she liked the or something option. You. I don't know how long she was gone exactly. Let's just say long enough for me to fear she gotten a little carried away with her new persona and decided to keep the cave all to herself. She returned, though, and somehow I knew, even before I saw her, that we were no longer lost. We spent the rest of the day on the long uphill track to the cave. It was a brutally difficult hike. We were not so much following an old trail as blazing a new as blazing a new one, clawing, clawing our way after Enra through miles and miles of virgin forest. Fortunately, the rain began to let up, and when at least when at last the sun broke through the clouds, I couldn't help, I couldn't help, feeling that the weather itself had taken our side in the struggle or at least grown tired of watching us suffer. Finally, in the, after, in the late after, afternoon, bruised, blistered, and weary beyond belief, 
we climbed over one last great outcropping of a, of stone. And arrived at our at our new home. First, first thing we did was spend a good hour or so collapsed in exhaustion, in exhaustion, devoting what little energy we had to taking in the view and discussing the rather forbidden, forbidding topic of food. The streams we saw coming up here had fish. Between that and whatever mountain vegetables we caught, we can find. We've got enough to stay alive at least. You know, I know there w- there aren't any easy answers for this, but what about the winter? Do you really think we can survive up here once it starts snowing? I don't know, Mickey. I I really don't see how we can. Not with these, not with these flim, flimsy jackets. Not without sleeping bags. But if we can just make it through the next couple of weeks, maybe I can risk a trip into town to get heavier coats and more supplies. I can risk. You mean we? No way am I going to sit here all along while you make it slow down. Let's just. Focus on the uh, focus on the here and now. Now, okay, we we've got plenty of work ahead ahead of us if we are going to turn this cave into a place where we can live. Hiro was right. Of course, there was no need to turn to the future as a source of challenges. Challenges. The here and the now offered plenty of 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 them. As as October turned to November, the trees shed the last of their leaves, and the long nights grew bitterly cold. Hiro and I, over a period of days, sealed sealed the entrance to the cave with a thick wall built built of tightly bound branches and packed earth. This at least kept. The wind out and prevented animals from getting at our food, and food, of course, was a major preoccupation. Though it was extremely, in, though it was extremely limited in variety, I ate nothing but fish and wild vegetables all day long. It was surprisingly bountiful in supply. Hilo became so skilled, so skilled. At catching and drying fish, we soon reached a point where our only problem was one of storage. Well, that and my insatiable craving for something, anything than anything other than fish. One day, after a long morning, long morning gathering wood, I lay down next to the fire and intendingly and in, and intending only to rest my. Eyes fell into a deep, deep sleep. Mickey. Wake up now. Listen. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay quiet and do exactly as I say. Some decisions aren't de- aren't decisions at all. They are a matter of pure and un- unadulterated. Unadulterated, unadulterated instinct. Mickey, shut up. Mickey, shut up, shut up, or so help me, I'll crack your head open with the nearest rock. Do you have any idea? Any idea? What you put us through, we are out here like living like animals because of you, like animals. I know Mickey, I know that Mickey. I understand, and I know that you hate me. If I were you, I'd hate me too. But I'm here to help you. I swear it's true. You've got to, you've got to believe me. I mean, think about it. If I want you, if I want on your side, 
Why would I come along? Why would I come along like like this? I wouldn't. I have brought a dozen deliverers with me. I would have brought a dozen deliverers with me, and you be the you be the one with your face in the dirt right now. Eka, Eka, amazingly enough, was telling the truth. The first thing she did, when she got out from from underneath me, was le- was was lead us through the woods to a hidden stash of supplies she built up over a period of days. A tent, sleeping bags, heavy winter coats, everything we need to survive the winter. She even included. A small crossbow, I could use for hunting. It was very different from the kudo bows I was used to, but nothing I couldn't master with a bit with a bit of practice. Eka's conversion from adversary to ally to ally had begun had begun when Akuzo's men recruited her in the effort to find us. It was then she learned that the punishment. Akuzu Akuzu had in mind for Hiro was to be far more cruel than the simple come come upon come upons come upons she imagined solitary confinement he, confinement Hiro until until you grow old and die Akuzu is going to turn your life into a nightmare into something so horrifying that no other deliverer. We ever dare to question his authority again?